Let's do this. This is Final Fantasy XIV, Dragon Song. All right. Ooh. Ooh, sexual theme. What a majestic give and take that last uh, eight bars were was. Um, <clears throat> so when she's getting into the, when the melody is building into what to me feels at this point is the is let's just say the hook of the track, a da, 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 da. and you have this you have the upper register strings kind of supporting and uh, bringing that up. But what I love is when composers use the cellos um, in the way where it's like. Well, that's going. Da, 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 da. You hear the bottom. Da, 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 da. So it's helping to support that change in power in the performance, and also dynamically. You saw me just kind of go, oh, like let me get my blanket and wrap myself with that string section because that's what it feels like when she came in. You have this beautiful piano. There's just just a very nicely, you know, very well played, very laid back comparatively to a lot of the compositions uh, from Final Fantasy. Very laid back, very beautiful chord changes that are giving you a little hope, but tension, hope and tension kind of a thing with a little bit of, a couple, a couple of chords that left you a little unresolved. Then she comes in, but then as soon as the melody starts to expand a little bit, probably after, I think it's maybe four bars and those strings come in, that was just like, oh, yes, thank you. Yet this bond of hope, my treachery was broke, scattering her words to the wind. That one string way up there, beautiful. Go get your chicken skin. You're crying. I'm not crying. Swelling over long seas of blood are a song and death on
Okay, before she comes back in, I'm pretty sure she's going to come back in. There's a little bit of a... <clears throat> It could be a little predictable in the fact that it's probably going to come and bring us down into a beautiful section, but I don't know. I'm going to find out in a second, maybe get my ass handed to me for saying that. However, um, saw some people leaving comments about her voice. She does have a most precision, but yet beautiful, not overdone vibrato. You know, uh, a lot of people have different ways to approach their vibratos. It can go faster, slower, depending on, on the piece of the, uh, the tempo of the track. Her voice is absolutely flawless. It's so beautiful. The mix is incredible. Um, but this instrumental section, as it's building up, I guess, is this a, um, uh, is this like a final song? Somebody had mentioned in the comments that maybe this was a um, uh, uh, RPG, an RPG ending kind of a song. Um, it has that essence, you know, that, that tell, like, tells the story of the whole game was just played and this is where we are and this is where we're going and who knows what tomorrow kind of holds, kind of a vibe. But the instrumental thing that we just, that passage we just heard, this last maybe eight bars, what I loved is that the composer didn't didn't uh, go to, if you would, more of a rounder, richer, deeper, harsher, percussive aspect to accompany the bump, 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 bump that's happening on the bottom. That was incredible. That was a wonderful choice for the composer not to back it up with big timpani or something as it was growing. There's an, there's an air and an edge of strength and glory and, and, and also, you know, uh, there's another word I'm looking for, with that part of the composition, but yet still keep it textured in a way by not putting those timpanis below it, still gives it a little more room. And it also for me as a composer, it feels like it's gonna give me a little more room to breathe just in case coming up the composition gets a little stronger, the arrangement gets a little bolder, that something like the timpanis wasn't something that was introduced early on, you know, energy-wise. It could be something coming. I, I don't know we're about to find out, but I wanted to, to bring that up about the bottom end. So I'm going to take it back a little bit, and I want you to listen for those strings at the bottom. Dun, 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 dun. Okay? And how he lets that, or the composer lets that sit. <laughs> That's what he did. Da, da. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just get, you know, as a composer, I get a little, uh, you know, you see if I can predict what note they're going to land on or something. Could have gone, it could have stayed in the minor third. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I love that. That was great. I love that piece, man. I really, really do. And when I had said earlier about the timpanis and stuff, yeah, there were some timpanis in the back of that section where the, uh, um, uh, the bass, double bass, sounds like it's doing like a, a marcato kind of a dun, 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 dun kind of pattern, but it wasn't doubling that, and that's what I was talking about. It's not doubling that pattern. It, it had its own percussive world that it lived in, 
but it wasn't you know it's it's like it's very similar to where uh kick drums of a, of a drummer you know the kick drum and the bass lock up a lot of times you know but when it is when it doesn't that you just have a different kind of life that happens at the bottom end when you know if that stuff's not all locked up like that so super 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 good listen man i lo uh, uh, loved it um okay so somebody said that if i wanted to hear a daniel a danny elfman-esque um track from final fantasy 14 what was the name of that one again somebody popped it up there mm. Mogul, Mogul. Okay, wait. Mogul King. Uh, is it this one, the top one? Would it have been that this top one right there that you guys want me to check? Yes. All right. All right. So apparently, this one is the closest one. Like, cause yeah, I love Danny. Who doesn't love Danny Elfman? The guy's leg. That Danny Elfman holds holds a very unique place in my top five composers for a couple of reasons, but one of them is his just incredibly intricate use of rhythmical arrangements and and his and what I would call his color characterization of orchestra of orchestral works. You know, because I see colors and stuff like that when I listen to music, so that's what I got to call it. Is what it is. Danny Elfman's absolutely a uh, super rock star. Um, so, all right, let's listen to this, see what this is all about. Guys, remember, if this does loop, please let me know if it loops. Hello? Oh, there we are. Okay. Totally! Okay, well, you know, um, what do you say? I mean, that's really close clip <laughs> of uh, uh, Nightmare, uh, a Christmas Night, uh, that movie. What's a Halloween Town uh, track? Um, I I don't want to ever say that it's a direct rip. I I'd like to say that. The influence is really super heavy, okay, and um, and of course, there could have been a purposeful reason to do that because you may wanted to pull that, like people just automatically. I mean, look, within the first two bars, you're already going, Danny, where's Jack Skeleton? What the hell? Yeah, a, 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 an homage, exactly. I mean, you know. Um, I, in my short career as a composer for anything outside of music libraries, out of my 40-year career, I only did, what, 12 films and probably another half a dozen, you know, festival shorts and stuff. I never got a chance to really rinse and, and spread my wings and try unique things in composition. But I have never heard any other composer come up with the things that Danny Elfman does. And to the point of listening to this track, and even though it just totally seems obvious that the influence is there, that homage is probably one of the one of the funnest, cool things about what I'm listening to. Is not trying to hide that, you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, well, this is well, this is and it fits this character, and we love this, and you know, hats off to you know 
I'm not worthy to Danny Elfman. So, you know, uh, there is no melodic ripping off going on here whatsoever. If anything, the harder influence is all the rhythmical. Wait. <laughs> You know, truth be told, that particular approach where you have these little that kind of stuff and the harps that are all kind of greased with a little bit of reverb and some of the things you're hearing. Actually, you know, some of that comes from like older school kind of fun movies uh, and uh, composers like, uh, you know, um, the original Monster Mash, Claymation. You know, in those days, in like, let's say the late 50s, early 60s kind of compositions, when it comes to spooky approaches to writing uh, music, in this case, spooky, uh, sp spook comedy, come spookity, whatever you want to call it, um, that's not so dark and harsh and stuff, yet there's a sense of humor to it or just a sense of, you know, having fun with it, you know that that kind of feel does kind of come from, you know, back into, as far as I can recall, some of the late 50 claymation type things, but um, still yet, you know, I love it. I'm watching also what this is here and it actually fits absolutely perfectly. <laughs> That change right there, that's very Danny. Okay, so it's looping. Thank you so much for the heads up on that. I thought it was, but, you know, sometimes you never know because there could be a surprise part of another arrangement that's coming up. Anyhow, I mean, I pretty much said all I needed to about this track. Um, as far as dynamics and composition, one of the other things that also are, that pop up on these kind of tracks are these key changes. It sounds like it's in the same key, but there's some key changing that's going on there that kind of gives you a little. Ring, ring, ring. But the did you know the dead giveaway to the quote unquote Danny Elfman thing is actually the vocal aspect of it. If there wasn't, if the melody wasn't, the, the rhythmic aspect of that would be the dead giveaway to <laughs> Nightmare Before um, uh, Christmas, you know, soundtrack and stuff. So anyhow, that was super cool. Uh, really quick, I want to say uh, aloha. Well, first of all, aloha to everybody and a couple of new subs. Uh, Doranor, thank you very much. That was super cool. I really appreciate that. Uh, Appreciate your prime sub. And also, uh, uh, Harblet uh, third of the third. Thank you very much for the prime. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'll do whatever music today. This is the kind of day where I'm doing 
all kinds of music. I don't know that I'm going to do any gameplay today. I think I'm just going to rinse in music because I got me a miles. I got me a mile worth of craft food service here, where I could just munch and munch and munch, and my cup of coffee. And uh, yeah, so uh, let me see. Let me see. Thank you, Doranor. I really appreciate that. That that means a lot. Well, I, that was very nice of you. Thank you so much. Okay, um, uh, I want to do one more from Final Fantasy XIV. So uh, you guys choose one from Final Fantasy XIV, please, and then we'll drift into some other music. So uh, fire away on which one you want on Final on the fourteen. Oh, uh, well, look at that. Black Wolf Rises. What about this? Oh, no. I don't know if Chinese characters will work. And I can't copy and paste from chat. Or at least I, don't, I tried it and I don't know if it works. Uh, which one? I vote for Answers. Okay, let's just do Answers. Everybody says it's a beautiful track. And you guys tell me which one is which. Uh, with official lyrics, I have one with official lyrics. I have, that's uh, seven minutes. I have one that's right there, uh, your answer. That's only five minutes. I don't know if that would be the original. So let me know, guys. Is it number one or number three that you guys want me to listen to? Let me know, let me know, let me know, no, no. I may have seen answers. I don't know if, if I've heard it. Well, I'll hear it again. I don't know if you guys have noticed what I've been doing on my, my heavy metal channel. Could be number four, this one. Okay. Is that now what I've started to do is listen to tracks on my own, and I call it the twice baked sessions. <laughs> twice baked sessions. Boah. And that way I can listen to it, familiarize myself with it a little bit, and then on a second listen, I can really dive into deeper uh, um, uh, listens, you know? Uh, okay, everyone's saying uh, number one is the original. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead with number one. And um, yeah, number four is the orchestral version, number one is the original. All right, Jack Azaria, thank you so much. Uh, let's do this. This is called Answers uh, with Official Lyrics, whatever ARR main theme song, Final Fantasy XIV. Let's do this. All right. Hello. What are we doing here? Did I blow it? No volume? Oh.
I know everybody probably is like, oh, no! I can tell that there was a swell up coming with the orchestra there. Um, I thought the tone of the male voices, um, though it was all in one note and in one section, there was no octave going on there. It was more like a more of a baritone vibe. Uh, there was something about there was just something about the tones and the voices that I that I don't know why but I just wanted to hear a little more richness but it was a beautiful beautiful melody and I love the fact that we were just graced if you would with this angelic melody and voice and the only thing in the background for the first I think eight bars was the harp the harp though is is either there's there's a couple different kinds of of harps if you would or different um uh, sh not shape so much and I'm not even <laughs> I've worked with live harp only about a half a dozen times and I'm not like you know super world-class conductor um, orchestrator but I do know that there are some different sizes and stuff it just I don't know what the EQing was it, got, it was a little bit of a it was a little more brighter than I expected with that reverb and stuff but I just love the flow of it and it gave it a very renaissance pseudo Nordic vibe I don't know why, but I thought of Nightwish, uh, and who's who's the lady? Even though the lady that, um, what is her name right now? She's she's the main singer now. Um, I can't remember her name for the life of me. Fabulously talented, but and I know she's got a gigantic voice, but when she when she takes her voice and kind of dials it down a little bit, it kind of has that vibe. So there was yes, Flora Jansen. Thank you very much, and so, you know. There was a little bit of that, like I said, Renaissance Nordic kind of vibe with this um, uh, part here for what I just heard. So let me take it back about 10 seconds so we can get into that, um, you know, that, that nice next movement here. Here we go. Angeli, so That's what I was expecting. I mean, I don't know why. When I said Floor Jansen and Nightwitch. Now open your eyes while our plight is repeated. Still deaf to our cries. Lost in hope we might defeat. Our souls have been torn and our bodies forsaken. I'm sorry. I got to stop. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My stupid fart machine was on, but I didn't, it just goes off on its own, and I just right in the middle of that. I, that was the worst time. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now I'm going to bring it back just because I just – but I had to breathe. I couldn't stop laughing. Let me get this out of here. I feel like 
I feel like what's her name on 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 bloopers of uh, um, Seinfeld where you can't stop laughing. I just just give me a second here because that was the, out of nowhere. I'm so into this. I'm like I, I'm ready to go with my lighter or my cell phone, and all of a sudden the major rip to do. Okay, stand by. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I need a recoup session. Here we go. I'm going to take it back a long ways. Okay, just to give it the respect that it deserves. Okay, here we go. Let's try this again. I turned off the fart machine. Is the land's light of justice Ever flows the land's well of purpose Walk free
one of the you know there's a couple things uh, to you know that I want to bring up about this and when when the drums came in and the guitar came in you know at first before that little interruption that I had beforehand I came back and reset it um, so I listened to it even closer since I already heard it and yes when that came in it, it kind of put to what I said about you know what I thought you know the opening you know the the, the intimacy of the opening between the you had the male voices and then her melody came in. I said, oh, you know, kind of reminds me a little bit of a Renaissance Nordic uh, style uh, bit of music. And I, and I had mentioned, you know, Floor Jansen. And then it came in powering with the guitars and stuff. What I loved about what happened there is the fact that the guitars did not maintain an overwhelming power with the track. So it came in really powerful in the turnaround, you know, as, as, as to introduce the drums, just to introduce that thing. And then it pulled really back and it got back to more core orchestral uh, choices of, you know, uh, the organ is a very big part, no pun, <laughs> I'm sorry, big part of the, um, I don't know, today it's just not my day, <laughs> uh, a big part of this arrangement because it was a constant. But as the, um, as the song roped off and especially in the last 30 seconds where it's just her voice and the male voices, remember how I said earlier, I was kind of yearning for a little bit of maybe a warmer, richer bottom in the arrangements, you know. But then I realized that if this was more of that Renaissance period Nordic uh, kind of vibe, um, that the heaviness of it to relay from a composer to, to, to the audience kind of kept it really packaged where it was more like uh, the baritone section. You know, I mean, there could have been some upper bass, you know, bass uh, section, upper register for them, but it just kept them in there, just kind of kept it in the pocket, in the, in the truth pocket, if you would, of the baritone section along with her. Of course, uh, of course, dynamically with his tones, her voice is whoop, way up here in the tone value, whereas the vocals, you know, the men vocals were, were choir was down here. So anyhow, um, but yeah, this was killer. Sorry about that little break in the middle there, but I, I was dying there. I was dying laughing, and I don't know what the heck happened. And uh, but yeah, no. Just in case you guys think I'm kidding, no, I it was I wasn't blaming it on the on on air. Here it is, right here. You see, this is it. Um, I left it on, and it did it on its own. For God's sakes. So hang on.